This is Joe. He doesn't know how to sew, but there's a con that gives you a free ticket for entering the cosplay contest, so he wants to make a cosplay of the wise old man from RuneScape. And I was more than happy to welcome him into the world of competitive cosplay, even if it's just to save some money. But first, I gotta smell good. So let's thank today's sponsor, Scentbird. I love perfume, but it's really hard for me to justify spending a bunch of money on one scent. So Scentbird is perfect for me because they send you new fragrances every month for just $17. And you can get the really fancy designer fragrances. So you can have like really high quality, really nice perfumes for a fraction of the cost. This month I got Poets of Berlin, Persian Sunset, and Dream by Catherine Malandrino. And I really like the Dream one. Oh, it's very fruity, but it's like also kind of mature. And then I saw <laughs> that it has notes of apple and rhubarb. And rhubarb always makes me think of the Great British Baking Show. So in my head, this is what Mary Berry smells like. <laughs> So if you would like to smell like a mature, fancy baking lady, then you should check out the link in the description and use my code SARAH55OFF to get 55% off your first month of Scentbird. Thanks again to Scentbird for sponsoring this video. With that out of the way, Joe needs a pattern. Okay, go get a t-shirt from your closet that you don't want and are willing to destroy. Oh, I like this shirt. I have two of them. You have two, okay. What you're gonna do is wherever there's a seam, you're gonna cut it. You don't have to cut it perfectly, but cut apart all the seams. Okay. Why do you think I've made you do this? Patterning. Yeah. Joe is the first person to see all of my videos, so he's seen every single one of my videos. So the fun part for me is seeing how much you just already know. Joe does get to kind of cheat because I was gonna make this, so I already picked out the fabric for him. All right. We've got the beginnings of your pattern. So we're gonna go downstairs and lay your fabric on the floor and you're gonna cut out your dress. Mm -hmm. So this is a cotton jersey. So it's got some stretch to it. So how, how do you cut the front and the back pieces so that they're both symmetrical? You cut it along a folded line. Yeah. So if you wanna get two, how do you need to fold it? You gotta fold it twice. Okay, so maybe fold it again. But the question is, how big does it need to be? So you want 57 inches. Let's do 56. Well, you need, why do you need an inch more than 56? For seam allowance, seaming, sewing. What do you call the bottom of it? Hemming? Yep, the hem. So here's this part. What do you do with that? You cut around it. But you're doing it on fold, so what do you need to do with it? I don't know. Maybe fold it in half. Time to cut. Where do I start cutting? Wherever you want. How much more out should I go? That's probably fine. Just take it all the way down to the end. Wow! You should have two, front and the back. It'll be tight on you. You'll be a very tightly fitted old man. Now you need your sleeves. Stretch fabric's pretty annoying, isn't it? Mm-hmm. All right, that's all your pieces. That's your whole pattern. Mm-hmm. Now we're gonna sew it together. Look who's come to help you. Miss Kitty. Now you're gonna thread the machine. Do you know how to do it? No. No? Look at these little guys. There's no numbers. There's no numbers, but there's arrows. So this is how this machine is actually threaded. Not too hard. And here's how it went for Joe. He got the first couple of steps, but then struggled when it came to the needle. I don't, where does it go now? So go through that guide, and then you've got a guide above the needle that comes around the other way. Go around it? No, no, no. Go through, go on, no, 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 no. You got it. Now go through the needle. I don't know what that means, honey. Put the thread through the hole. What hole? There's a hole in the needle. There you go. You did it. Here's the stitches. If you use a straight stitch on stretch fabric, it's gonna snap. So you need a zigzag stitch. So switch to a zigzag stitch. Wow, you did it. And you're, re you're ready to sew. Okay. Okay, so you may need to move Miss Kitty. Come on, Miss Kitty. You can lay over here. Good enough. So, you need to sew the fronts and the backs together. I've kind of set you up for annoyance here with the stretch fabric. But look at you, you're pinning stuff together. Do you think that's how you pin stuff? No, but you've not taught. We don't just stick them through. There's two ways you can do pins. You can either go this way, but you can also pin them this way, 
And sometimes that's a little bit better for some fabrics. Well, I'll do this side for you and then you do the other side. Yeah? Mm -hmm. You can do that. Okay, so now you're gonna take that over to the machine. You just wanna line up this edge with the edge of the presser foot. And then the lever to take it down is back here. There you go. So when you start a seam, if you just start sewing, the thread can come apart eventually, right? Because it's just going in and out. So what you do when you start a seam is you do a back stitch. You're basically going to start your seam with the foot pedal, and then you're going to hit this lever, hold it down, and hit it again, just for a second. Yep, just like that. And go back, go back, and then go forward again, and then go back again. Okay, that's a back stitch. That makes a knot. Now you just keep going over it. And when you get to a pin, pull it out. Ooh, good enough, close enough. Yeah, so now you do a back stitch. There you go. That's all it is. So now, with this machine in particular, it's not computerized. So you see how the needle, no, 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 don't move it. The needle is still a little too far in. Mm -hmm. What you wanna do is, this is the hand wheel over here. So you wanna raise the needle back up by turning the hand wheel. And you'll see the bobbin thread do its last little thing down there. And you'll kind of feel it let go of the tension. And then now you can take it off. And then right here, this is a thread cutter. So you can just do that. You did it, you sewed your first seam. Mm -hmm. Now you just gotta do the other shoulder. He's learning. Now you have your shoulder seams. So now, the next seam you're gonna wanna do is we wanna go from the bottom of our arm's eye, so right here, all the way down to the bottom. So you have two big, long seams to do. Are you scared? No. No? When I have big, long seams to do, I don't pin them together, but you can pin them together if you want to. Joe has made the sewing machine work for him. He wants it this way so that he can lay the fabric on the table. There you go, good readjustment. You didn't see what he did there. He got a little bit off, and so he just picked up the presser foot so that he could readjust the fabric under the presser foot. It was very good intuition, Joe. This curling that the fabric is doing is usually why I don't recommend people start with stretch fabric, because stretch fabric likes to curl like that, and it makes getting your seam straight a little harder when you're a beginner. But it does have the added benefit that if it doesn't fit quite right, it will probably still fit you because it's stretch. I have never seen someone sew by straddling a sewing machine, but. Well, you're my only teacher. <laughs> okay, the next step is to do that again on the other side. You wanna go ahead and try it on before you do the other seam? Sure. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna be tight on you. Do you, did you want it that tight? That's fine. Yeah? It looks good. Your first fitting. Okay, come look at yourself. Looks good. Yeah? You proud so far? Yeah. Okay, he might not look super excited here, but I know that this is the face of a man beaming with pride. Yeah, I think it looks good. We're on to your second seam. Would you like my advice? Yeah. Okay. I think you should, though I am chaos and I don't usually pin my big seams, but I think you should go through and pin it horizontally like that to keep it from curling down. I know you don't like that the fabric was falling off the table. Being able to stand here and do it this way will help you see it better. Okay. There you go, get it nice and flat. It's gonna make it easier to get a nice straight seam. Mm -hmm. Do you hate that I gave you stretch fabric to do this with? Well, I don't really know much better, so. Well. Cotton doesn't curly cue like that. I mean, we could, what, iron it? Uh, I actually tried and it did not help. <laughs> At least it'll fit though. And it'll be comfortable. Yeah, that, I mean, that the original plan was I was gonna make it. So it was more about making him a thing that would be comfy than it was buying a fabric that would be easy for him to work with. Yes, because you already made me a quest cape. I did. Which is what the wise old man gives you when you complete all the quests. I'm gonna give you my grandma's slap bracelet pin cushion. Okay. So that you can actually put the pins in the pin cushion and not on the table. Right. All right, are you ready to do your next seam? Mm-hmm. And what do you do when you start it? Back stitch. Yep, you do a back stitch. I'll move this one a little yep. bit lower. Where do you put it? I'm just gonna move it for now. That I don't hit it. So that I don't break a needle on the like button. Thank you, Joe. Uh, uh. Yes. <laughs> and you yell at me about the pins on the floor. I didn't put them on the floor. But I they fall, the if you put them on the table, guess who knocks them off? Kitty. 
Almost there. Almost. So, can you stop for a second? So, you're doing this. You're stretching the fabric out a little yeah. bit. You don't want to do that. You just want to okay. light pressure. You don't want to ever pull it through because that's what these guys under it are doing. Mm -hmm. They're pulling the fabric through for you. You just want to guide it. Yeah. You did it. Yay. Yay. Okay, we'll do your sleeves and your hems tomorrow. Okay, you got to do your sleeves now. Mm -hmm. These are your sleeves. So what you're gonna do first, you're gonna fold them over. You're gonna get these pinned together again. Don't worry that those don't match up at all. That's happened because we did a chaos pattern. And you're gonna sew up the side. Okay, can you do that? Okay. Can I tell you, while you pin that up, can I tell you my ideas for your cosplay name? Yeah. Okay, Joe doesn't have a cosplay name and not that cosplay names are like completely necessary, but I mean, he needs something for them to say on stage. I've picked a bunch of stuff. Joe wants Munchie in there because that's the name of one of our cats who is our only boy cat. These are the ideas. Munchie howls because he howls at night. Mm -hmm. Munchie tuxedo or my favorite tuxedo Joe, cat dad cosplay. Oh, that's cringe. That's not cringe. It's also probably taken. Do you like any of those? Um. So now sew that up. Do you want the slap bracelet again? Sure. What are you gonna do when you start? Backstage. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, put, put your fesser foot down. There you go. Oh no! It's not threaded. It's oh, okay. Another thing, another thing about threading a sewing machine. The presser foot has to be up. Oh. You're doing great, sweetie. Thank you. Pull that needle back up. Pick the presser foot back up. You did it. Okay, now do that to the other sleeve. Would you like to tell everybody how long you've been playing RuneScape? Um, I've been playing RuneScape since 2003. And then I played it through middle school and then stopped to play WoW for a while and then came back when old school was released. I've been playing that for a while and I love it. <laughs> anyway, back to work. She wants to help. I know, Miss Chubby. You have two sleeves now. Are you ready for the hard part? I am. Okay, first I gotta explain right side and wrong side. Mm -hmm. This fabric does not have a right or a wrong side. It's all the same on both sides, but we have created a right and a wrong side because now we have these seams. Mm -hmm. We want all of these to go on the inside of the garment. Right. Chubby agrees. So to get your sleeves on, we need to get this hole and this hole right sides together, okay? Mm -hmm. This is our wrong side. If we turn this, can we remove her? Thank you. If we turn the sleeve inside out and we put it inside the bodice, then we now have these right sides together. You can tell the right sides together because when you line up this part where the seam is, you can see your ugly seam. And on the other side, you can see your ugly seam. Instead of using pins, I'm gonna give you the clips because when you pin sleeves together, you usually end up poking yourself in the hand. Okay. If this was like a commercial pattern, Mm -hmm. We would have little notches that told us where they go together, mm -hmm. but we don't have that. So we're just gonna eyeball it. And if it's not quite right, you can adjust it while it's on the machine. You can do it with your helper. Hi, Miss Helper. Thank you, Miss Chubby. I think you would actually do really well with a commercial pattern. Like once you know sort of the basics of sewing. I feel like if I gave you a commercial pattern that had like actual instructions, you'd probably be able to follow them. Uh, you wouldn't. I don't like them because I don't like following instructions. You got it? I think so. Okay, so to set in a sleeve, the take the cartridge off to expose the free arm mm -hmm. so that you can do this. See? Mm. Makes, it I see. makes it a little easier to go round and round. Right. Are you nervous for the sleeve? Um, I, gave you this to put those away. I guess so. You're nervous? Make sure, okay, so slow down. Make sure you are. Oh, one of the things you can do especially with something like this, is it's important to stop and flip up and make sure you have both layers mm -hmm. in there. And then also making sure that nothing's getting weird. Mm -hmm. Okay. There you go, flipping up, good boy. You're almost all the way around. It's okay if you get a pucker. We all get puckers when we f first learn to sew. And when your girlfriend gives you a pattern that's not really a pattern at all. Well, we're doing our best. Yes, we are. Okay, you're done. Now take it off. 
Wow, he's got a pucker on one side, but he did pretty good. The other benefit to this fabric is you don't have to put in a zipper. Yo, homo. <laughs> like you do have to get in like an earthworm. Okay, what do you think? It looks good. Give us a little 360. Wow. wow. Do you like it yeah. so far? Yeah, it looks good so far. You feel like you look like for a, a old wizard man? A one-armed wizard man, maybe. We got a little fold over too, but that's okay. You'll look back on this and be like, wow, look at these little things that mm -hmm. I'm so much better at later. All right, now you gotta do that again. You did it, you did your second sleeve. Ooh. You didn't sew it on inside out, which is the most important thing. Joe got a little bit off kilter and he's got some pretty big puckers here, but you know what? This side looks good. <laughs> but the next thing I wanna show you is how you're gonna do the hems. Okay. And we're gonna practice it first. Welcome to the tiny little awkward spot that I iron in. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna do a double fold hem. So let's pretend this is your hem. You're gonna fold it once mm -hmm. and you're gonna press it. And you're gonna fold it again and you're gonna press it. Can you do that? Mm. Our, the goal is to get our raw edge completely covered. So if it rolls onto itself and you only have to fold it once, then that's also fine. So the other thing is when we press, it's not, I do it all the time. I do this motion, like you're ironing it. You're actually just supposed to press it okay. and hold it. There you go. And then if you want, you can hit this button and it'll do the steam. Okay, you should be good to fold it again. This is called a clapper. Mm -hmm. Once you press it, you put it on top and that helps it stay really flat and really pressed. And we're done pressing. Okay. You did it. Okay, Joe, how long's it been since you worked on this? A few weeks. How many days until DreamHack? Uh, five. You know what that means, Joe? Mm-hmm. This is your first con crunch. Yay. <laughs> no, Chubby, that's hot. No, she's back to help again. You gonna help, Munchie? Thank you, Munchie. Help. Is that your last pin? I think so. I am so tempted to get in there and just do it for you, but. I bet. I can't, it's yours. You're gonna compete in it. That is basically the only rule is you have to make it. You can't help Monkey, he has to do it. I really did give you like one of the hardest fabrics I could have given you to work with. Okay. You ready for the machine? Ready. Do you remember how to use it? It's been a minute. Yes. You remember how to put it on there? Uh, yes. You want to aim to get it at the top of that fold that you did. Are you ready? Ready. Okay, your first hem. Okay, how do I make it go backwards again? Did you put the presser foot down? You did not. No. There you go. It's not doing too bad. Does doing this make what you've seen me do more impressive now? Um, that's a loaded question. <laughs> what do you mean? You're just self-glazing. Does it give you more of an appreciation of the stuff that I've done? Oh, I've always appreciated it. When did you get the idea that I did it? Well, you've never like done it though. Sure, I sat in your class and I tried to make a hat. <laughs> that probably was the more, more of the day that I was like, okay, this is hard. <laughs> it doesn't have to be good to participate. It only has to be good to win. As long as you make something that you can put on your body and that doesn't fall apart, then you've done a good job. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think you put the presser foot down. I didn't. Last pin. Last pin. You did it. Oh, back stitch. You did it. I did it. Now you just gotta also hem your sleeves, <laughs> which are much shorter. And then you gotta do the facing on the neckline. Do you wanna do those today? I'm hungry. So we were running out of time, so I made him skip past his neckline and his sleeve hems and move on to his crown. So first I had him do some basic math to figure out how big the crown needed to be by measuring a picture of the old man. And I don't even have to do the math. 4.15. Mm -hmm. Also jump scare, I'm blonde. I think I made some of these a little bit off. We'll see. It's okay, no one will ever notice. They will notice if you don't have a finished neckline though. 
but at least you can walk across the stage with a crown and a beard. This is not a video about how you win cosplay contests. This is a video about how you participate in one. Mm -hmm. To get a free ticket. <laughs> to get a free ticket. That's not really common. Free Mac is like the only con I know that does that. And this is probably a lot more work than just paying for a ticket. I saw a thing that was like, if you come in cosplay, you can get a ticket for $10. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> We're committed to the bit at this point. Okay, those are some points. Wow. Now cut that out. You cut that out. Bitch. It's your cosplay. Do you want to use the X-Acto knife? It's faster. Sure. Are you also an X-Acto knife, bitch? Oh, wait. Mm. Eh, it's fine. Hmm. I was like, oh, I forgot to tell you to add seam allowances. But for beginners, sometimes it's better to just fudge your seam allowances a little bit and be able to mark exactly where your seam goes, especially with something with pointy stuff, because it makes it easier for you to get it right. Okay, now hold it up to your head and wrap it around your head and look in the mirror. I'm partying. You're partying? Oh yeah. You like it? Yeah, it looks good. All right, we'll do the rest tomorrow. Okay, it's Thursday night. Dream hack is tomorrow. So tonight, for sure, we're gonna get his crown and we're gonna get your beard and we should be able to do all of that pretty quickly. We have your pattern. I have gone ahead and cut for my student two pieces of, do you know what this fabric is? I use it all the time. No. It's micro suede. Two layers of micro suede for you. Uh, you're gonna take this also great thing I wish I had when I was a beginner, a heat erase pen. Mm -hmm. Go for it, trace out the pattern. So just like right along it, you mean? Yeah. Just trace it, just trace it. One sec. <laughs> we're con crunching! <laughs> I will open up this wig and see what we're working with. For Joe's beard, we just bought a white wig. And of course, it's a map of beauty wig because it's like $10 and on Amazon Prime. Basically what we're gonna do with the wig is I'm gonna give you a piece of felt and you're gonna cut a piece of felt that will fit on your face that is that shape of his beard. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna have you hand sew this onto that felt. Okay. All right, so now remove the pattern from the thing. You're gonna get some pins. Mm. You're gonna pin it together. I have to submit my application. You never gave me any footage. Okay, well, I'll send you screenshots. You can apply tomorrow, I'm sure. I'm sure, but is that is that what you like to do? No. Well, while you're doing that, I will pull up your footage. For context, we went ahead and bought two tickets with the caveat that if he doesn't get this done, I'm just not gonna go. And me and my brother are competing in Smash, as is tradition. But you need to finish it. <laughs> That's all of them. Ta-da! Okay, you've done it. So you're gonna sew here. You're gonna leave this open. You're gonna sew here. And you're gonna sew up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, right on this line. Sew directly on this line and then go down to here. Okay. Okay. You are going to set it to a straight stitch. Make sure you put down your presser foot. Okay, I gotta show you how to pivot. I forgot. So go to that point and stop. Now, when you've gotten here, you're going to either make sure you land with the needle down or you're going to lower the needle with the hand wheel, pick up the presser foot, mm -hmm. pivot it. Come back down, go to the next point, do the same thing. Let me see you pivot. Okay, now stop at the point. You're good, you're down. So now pick up the presser foot, pivot it. You want the needle to be down because it lets you actually use this as an anchor point. Put the presser foot back down. Go for the next one. You got it. I'm gonna put your build book together. Okay, this is how you put together a build book. I have a bunch of footage here. You probably will have like phone pictures. So this will be easier for you, but I'm gonna go through this footage and look for relevant in progress pictures. Okay. I'm stopping here because this is a picture of him doing the pattern. Not that you actually have to be in the picture, but I don't know who's judging this and I know people. And if I walk into the room, the first question is going to be, Sarah, did you make this? And I need to have pictures that are like, nope, he did it. Well, we'll have videos, but yeah, pictures too. But also it does help if you are in at least some of your progress pictures, even if it's like a mirror selfie, because it sh proves to the judges that you actually made the costume. And that's important because sometimes people f lie. 
I'm essentially just looking for pictures of the costume not being finished, which you should just take with your phone. Well, why should I, if you're just gonna take screenshots. What do you mean? Then why should I take pictures of my phone? I'm not talking to you. <laughs> well, how the f am I supposed to know that? I'm a YouTuber, what are you talking? We're making a YouTube video. <laughs> I didn't know you had a, your microphone out. If the camera's still rolling, Joe. <laughs> That's it for the dress. I'm just gonna take pictures of the half-finished crown. Luckily, there's not a lot of pieces of your cosplay, and most of the pieces aren't even made yet, so we can take all the work-in-progress pictures tonight. What do you think of the micro suede? Is it easier to work with? Yes. <laughs> By how much? A lot. Yeah? Infinite a lot. <laughs> Infinite a lot. It doesn't move. Mm-hmm, it doesn't move. Cottons and polycottons are like the cheapest fabrics you can buy and they are wonderful to work with as a beginner. If you find those a little too challenging or you have the money and you would like a nice texture on your cosplay but you still want it to be easy, micro suede. Almost there, you're almost there. You did it. Take it off the machine. Oh, I forgot we matched. Yee, bonfire, merch, get some if you want some. Okay, so now, Basically, we need to cut this down so these will turn inside out. If these were curved, they would be scallops. You have essentially made pointed scallops. Okay. But what we wanna do with these is we wanna clip our corners. So you wanna cut it pretty friggin' close to those stitches, but do not cut the stitches. So leave this much like all the way around pretty much. Yep, leave that much all the way around, but cut a little bit into those corners. So like cut that much off and then just clip as close to the corner as you can. Did a great job on these though. It looks so perfect and straight. Thank you. Okay, now we're gonna press it. Okay, so turn it inside out. This is the one thing about micro suede though that is, that does definitely makes it a little more challenging than cotton. It's a little hard to get turned inside out. Uh, and I have for you. And those are po inside out pokers or? Yes, inside out poker. It's a crochet hook. But yeah. in this room it is mostly a inside out poker. There you go, that looks nice. Okay, uh, tip I have for this, I think I learned from Professor Pincushion. Um, instead of just like poking this way, what you actually wanna do is push it into this part of the seam and push that way. And then do that on the other side. So push it into this part of the seam and push it in. Flossing? Like your teeth? Or like the, the dance? The proper way to floss, yeah. You put it on one side of your tooth and <laughs> rub it up and down the other side of your tooth. Yeah, it's something okay. you're not super into, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good tip for this though, it does make it a lot better. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Thank you, Professor Pincushion. I'm pretty sure that was a Professor Pincushion thing. Yeah, I should say that louder because I just mumbled it. This is a good idea though, it does make it a lot easier. Wait, why are you doing Maru's voice now? <laughs> am I? Yeah, you I went not. straight to Maru's son no, my, I, I am a dwarf of the I did sun. Oh. R.I.P. to that campaign. R.I.P. We never finished the Curse of Straw. What do you want for dinner? Some XP's. So, you're gonna take this, go put it on your ironing board, and while the iron is heating up, I will explain to you what this is. This. Yes is a pressing cloth. You're gonna put the pressing cloth over it. Pressing cloth will protect the other fabric from the iron. Now press it. Just go all the way across. You did it. All right, so now take it back to the table. I have laid out some, as my dumbass who can't read called it, Pelion 72F, which is actually Pelon 72F. It is an upholstery interfacing that I like to use for hats. Same sh trace that out. Do it quickly. We're con crunching. That's not my lifestyle. Well, you were the one that didn't work on this cosplay. You can cut that out off camera, that doesn't matter. We're gonna come over here and you're gonna press this again. You're gonna fold this edge and you're gonna press it. And you're gonna flip it over and you're gonna do the same thing to the other side. And I am gonna come in with the assist and pattern your beard. You get this one little bit of assistance because it's not like you actually have to pattern everything. <laughs> Some people do things like use commercial patterns. So it shouldn't be that big a deal that I pattern your beard. Does it look like a beard? Yeah. Joe has finished pressing this thing and now you need to cut two things out and do it quickly. Whoa, okay. Shove that in here. Mm -hmm. 
it'll fit, it'll fit, it'll fit, it'll fit, it'll fit. All right, clip that, and then we're gonna put it to the side, and I'll let you top stitch the bottom of it tomorrow. <laughs> Cut this out. Now, I would let you hot glue the beard, but. Doing it proper. Well, because my stuff is already with Maddie for hall mat, and she has my hot glue gun. Ooh, crown for a king. Mm -hmm. Stop, it's so cute. Okay, now take your wig, open her up. We basically wanna take a large portion of this wig and sew it onto this. Mm -hmm. So cut the wig at that line. It's okay if you cut some of the fiber, you don't need a whole lot of it. It's cut. Okay, we're gonna pin this on so you can hand sew it. And then this part, so this can get sewn right here, but go ahead and cut this down the center. Tuck, tuck all the ugly stuff in. We're gonna, we're gonna pin it all together and put it on you. So we, if we take a picture of you in the whole cosplay when it's not done, that's pretty much the only photo you need. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think. You might just be able to show the beard directly to the hat. We'll sew this on so it's not standing out like that, but all right. <laughs> that looks good. We'll have to cut that part down so it's more even, but tonight, Zach's piece. Zaxby's. Yeah, you look very funny. We had Zaxby's. It's morning. Joe's gonna learn how to hand sew. You get your thread. I always pull two lengths of my own arm because that way, like, when you're sewing it, when you pull it up, you, like, don't have to go any further than your own arm. Mm -hmm. And you go thread your needle. And I got you the little needle threader thing if you want to use it. The way this works is you stick it in there and then you put the thread through there and then you pull it through. Okay. So thread your needle. I'll pull that through. And then what I do, this is what my grandma taught me to do. You can't just leave it like this, but I don't like having to re-thread the needle. So I pull it all the way down to the other end. And then this is how I tie the knot at the end. So you wanna, I always fold it over so that I get like a quadruple knot. So fold it over like that, wrap it around your finger and then twist your thumb over your finger and grab the end with your nail. There you go, there you go. There's your knot, it's a big old knot. That means it's not going anywhere. You're gonna do a whip stitch. Mm -hmm. Okay. And a whip stitch is basically just this. You go in, you come out. You go in, you come out, okay? Whip stitch it. You can have them big, you can have them small. Just make sure you're going through both the wig and the felt. Okay, you're running out of thread, so I'm gonna show you how to tie a knot. So for the knot, you don't need to go through both. Go through the felt, take this end, wrap it around three times, and then pull it out. So you do that. One, two, three. Now pull the needle out. And that's your knot. Giving you these three things. No losing my favorite scissors. Here's your weapons. You're going to tackle that for the rest of the day. But he would not tackle it for the rest of the day. So the day of the contest came and his cosplay was completely unfinished. But we were committed to it. So Joe got into his bald cap and Listen, I have never put a bald cap on anybody before and I just taped it to his head. So it didn't need to be great. Anyway, he got baldy capped and we headed off to DreamHack. So it was finally time to see if we would get that free badge. And we talked to a nice guy at registration, but he didn't really know what to do because Joe had signed up like the night prior, so he didn't get sent like a QR code or anything. And I even went off to see the cosplay staff to see if they'd give Joe a badge while Joe sat on the floor and finished his beard. But ultimately... Okay, the update is Joe applied way too late and they only give you the free badge if you apply in time. Which was said nowhere, by the way. But they gave me a discount code, so I got mine for 20 bucks, so... In the end, we only had to pay full price for one DreamHack ticket and 20 bucks for mine. But Joe's gonna make lots of friends today. Mm -hmm. So no victory in the free badge, but Joe went off to do the thing he actually came to the con to do, go do the melee tournament with his brother. And while Joe's getting toasted, I need to actually tell you what DreamHack is. So DreamHack is not like the kind of cons I usually go to. I usually go to anime conventions. DreamHack is a gaming convention. It's about bringing your own computer and playing games around hundreds of people. It's about thousands of people playing Magic the Gathering. And it's about giant, giant, giant expensive booths promoting Call of Duty Mobile. 
Yeah, really. So DreamHack's wheelhouse is games, and from what I understand, they do that pretty well. Their wheelhouse is not cosplay, but they do want cosplayers to come, obviously, with the promise of free tickets and discounts for cosplayers. They obviously want cosplayers to come. But despite that, the cosplay stuff, particularly the costume contest, is not super well run, and this year, it was particularly bad. But since Joe is completely out of his melee tournament now... I lost. You lost pretty bad. It was time for him to go to pre-judging, which was the first particularly bad thing about how DreamHack did the costume contest this year. So normally, when you go to a costume contest, there will be like a table, a room, a something, where you go get signed in, and then you go to a nice little quiet room where you get pre-judged. Well, this year, DreamHack had all of that in a single little walled off section of the dealer's room, which was right by the main stage. So it was really loud and pre-judging was also in the same space. So everybody was just around, but then came the really weird thing. We got Joe signed in, mm -hmm. but we also just found out there's only one judge. I mean, Joe's not gonna win anyway, but like, why is there only one judge? This is not normal. Normally, there's at least two judges if it's a really, really small con, but most commonly there's three, and in bigger competitions, you'll see like six or seven. It's done that way, so you have people with a variety of specialties, with experience in cosplay. It's also done that way to avoid biases. So having one is super weird for a con of DreamHack's size, but there was a reason for this that wasn't really a thing DreamHack could help. We found out later that there were actually three judges, and what happened was there were a bunch of sports in Atlanta that day, and two of the judges got stuck in traffic. So they just had one of the judges go ahead and start judging, because she was already there. Okay, Joe just got pre-judged, how'd you do? Um, I think I hit everything I was supposed to say. Tell me, tell me what, I couldn't get the audio of you talking, so tell me what you said. All right, I said the robe, I patterned out of a t-shirt, that I cut up and then sewed together out of cotton jersey, which was very stretchy and hard to work with. And then I hemmed the bottom and didn't hem the sleeves. I didn't have time. And then the wig, I mean, the beard was made out of a wig that cut up and sewed onto felt. And the hat is made out of upholstery interfacing that uh, I covered in micro suede cover. And uh, that my girlfriend made the cape and that's what made me want to make the rest of the cosplay. And that's pretty much it, I think. Now we got a while before we got to be back. Yeah, but then you get to walk on the stage. Wait, show me your old man walk. Show me old man walking. Why am I doing it? I'm not doing an old man walk. Walk like an old man. I'm not doing an old man. Walk like an old man. There you go. <laughs> be decrepit. No. Joe's pre-judging was around lunchtime, but the actual stage show wouldn't start until seven o'clock at night. So we mostly sat on the floor of the melee room playing parents to Joe's little brother so he could go around playing melee with people and make some friends, which he did. So that's a win, at least somebody made friends. And after hours of waiting, Joe finally went backstage with the other competitors and didn't make any new friends because he was really tired. This is competing, Joe. You get here at 10 a.m. and they make you stay here until 7 o'clock. Yay. And you're tired and you just want to go home. It's okay. I'm having fun. But eventually, they were getting lined up, so I went to get my seat to see Joe have his moment in the sun. Next up, I'm hoping this is correct. Are you Mr. Munchie? Let's give it up to Mr. Munchie! <laughs> did really good on stage and I'm really proud of him. And before we get to the awards, I have another thing that I don't like about the DreamHack contest. So when they do the awards, before they present them, they go off for a second and they line up a couple contestants in each of the categories and then they call those people up on stage 
to get announced as like first, second, and third place, right? I think that's garbage because you're essentially walking over there and telling everybody else that they just lost all at once. I, I don't know, I don't like that. If I was in a costume contest and somebody came up and was like, you, you, and you, you're coming up on stage. And I was just left standing there, I'd be like, oh, I lost, woo. It wouldn't feel good, you know? Anyway, that's how they were doing it. But I guess they didn't really communicate to everybody who was and wasn't supposed to come on stage because they started to call up the novice category and this happened. So let's bring up our novices. If you are a novice and we just lined you up, please join us up on stage. That's how we found out Joe didn't win anything. By him literally getting shooed off stage. And he's a really chill and wonderful person, and this didn't bother him. But if this happened to me, I would have been mortified. And yeah, as expected, with his cosplay not being finished, Joe didn't win anything. He was also up against some really incredible builds. I particularly loved this Zelda that won an award in the novice category. I saw her a couple of times at the con and I thought it was really good and I never got to say that to her. So if she's watching, I really like this Zelda. You did a really great job. Anyway, what was important was Joe did great on stage and did the little RuneScape dance. I could literally go on for a really long time about everything that was wrong with DreamHack's costume contest this year, and if you would like a video about that, comment down below. Anyway, the costume contest ended, and I got to see the amazing Mr. Munchie again. How do you feel? I'm tired. How did it feel to be told to walk up on the stage and then be immediately told to leave? It tracks. This is DreamHack. <laughs> The DreamHack costume contest is, as tradition, a little bit of a shit show, but I'm very proud of you. You did very good. Thank you. Are you it, proud of yourself? I'm proud of myself. It was it fun to be on stage? It was fun, but it's pretty scuffed. I did it. I got the free ticket, kind of. <laughs> kind of. So, Joe, would you ever compete again? Yeah, I would. Probably not at DreamHack, though. Did you have fun, though? Yeah, it was a lot of fun even though we got scammed with the ticket thing. Did lots of people like your cosplay? I mean, I wouldn't say a lot of people loved it, but there were a few people that really loved it, I guess. Thanks again to Scentbird for sponsoring this video. Remember, you can use my code Sarah55OFF to get 55% off your first month of Scentbird. And if you want to support the channel directly, you can check out my Patreon, where you'll get exclusive content, including now I'm doing live streams every weekend for the patrons, so if you want to come hang out live. The perk's available for all tiers, so you can get in for just a dollar. But if if you're just watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, or sending the video to a friend or your mom, then you're supporting the channel too. So thank you. Bye! Thank you to the patrons Momo816, Bunny, Melnizi, Florine, Zahira Koss, Flutter Q Koss, Kai Kai B, Ali, Ajax, Zinky Newell, Anika the Toasty, Zoe, Maria, Finley, A Cosplay, Chandelier, Eden, Kathy's Coscraft, Sam the Slob, Lo, Nika, Wolf's Cosplay, Joey, Ashling Lee, P Ban J, Mayhem Maker Cosplay, Himawari Gumi Cosplay, Punk Shepherd, Fursuits, Moss Boss, Phantom Angel, Magical Girl Melanie, Honey Crisp Koss, Lilith, Sydney, Kiara, Underlock V, Cyrus, aka Yoitz. 8-bit, Necky, boy toy name, 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 boy toy name noise, Willow, Bunny, Clown Supreme, Gumdrop Cost, Bonnie, Azure Kate, Joey, White Rabbit Cosplay, Hachi, Sweet Spectre, Still Beating Heart of Jeff Gordon, Nicole, Donna, A Bit of Cake, Cheyenne, Mac, Ethan, Maple Fran Cakes, Red Rover Dose, Peste at Calera, Darian, Gassy, Peepers, Tiny Wyvern, Polite Crow asking, oh, Polite Crow done with this. Open your bins, you know there's nuggets. Wow. Elias Locke, Lot of Bees, Tear Bear, Ray Zack, Sophie, He Made Dairy Cosplay, Cookie, Honeybean, Brittany, Butter, Lay, Cordon, Nora, Lollipop, Jester, Tootie, Fruity, Kelly, Spooky, Kitsune Cosplay, Luxtrous Cosplay, Jennifer, Abby, Lily, Lunar Lepus Cosplay, No Roman, LOL, Amai, Jelly, Lady Blue Cosplay, Hania, Fake Smiley, Seven, Sebastian, Amar, Kalili, Simrel, Matcha, Kit Kat, Walter, Jodai, Coconuts, Night Wolf, Bingus, Owl, Aaron with two E's, Takami, 
Potato, not Takami from Oran High School Host Club. Gabby Bear, Jesse Chu, Sarah, Calico, another zip tie. Alec, Lady, Senshi, Rambulan, Cosplay, Jenna, Kazmira, Tacey, Rory, Astro Fox, Kimberly, Tam Tam, The Tailored, Legfish, Amanda, Connie, Paul, Joe Burrito, GT Cosplay, Zihibi, Cal, Sansuffle Flare, Rhine Like Wine, Allison, MCC, not Alyssa, I'm sorry, Allison. Queen Platypus, D DP Nibbles Cosplay, Foxy McLoxy, Taylor, Tessa Bo, Shell, Alyssa, Wildflower, Max, Melissa, Akima Aki, Chibi Lease, Rainbow, Lola, Gloom Shroom, Infinite Salad, Sephestra, Kelly, Hubasta, Magda, Chai, Alba and Brent, Audrey, Benjamin, Spacey Stitches, Coco, Yumi, Skasa, Ariana, Articus, the Thai Gulf, Miner, Food Penguin, Alyssa, Ray does cosplay, Katie, Toby, Showman, Alice, Rebecca, Slushpuff, aka Corn Copy, Samantha, Adriana again, Amber, Kim, Psych Me Cosplay, Kaimatsu, Block Kitty, DJ, Meredith, Sarah, Calbones, Lunar, Lula Rush Cosplay, Smarty Dragon, Marcy, So Into Music, Julian, Cam, Zen, Andrew, Pin, Snip, and Clar. <laughs> mm hmm. You don't like following instructions either. Are you also an X Acto Knife bitch? Oh.